Good day, future engineers. Welcome again sa itong discussion on our, on our dynamics of rigid bodies. And for the topic for this uh, discussion will be on curvilinear motion. And we'll be talking about the rectangular components. So we already uh, discussed uh, that uh, the particle is not only moving along a straight line, but it's not only moving in a rectilinear path. A particle also moves along a curved path. That's why we call it our the curvilinear motion. So last time, uh, we discussed that uh, the normal and the tangential components of a particle moving in a curved motion. So diba? we have the, we have the uh, tangential velocity along with the tangential acceleration and its uh, normal acceleration. So these are the components of our of the particle is the velocity and acceleration in the normal and tangential components. Now, we'll be talking about the rectangular components of uh, the particle moving in a curved motion. So we know that uh, we, we do not always describe uh, the curvilinear motion, it's a velocity and acceleration or, or the position using the normal and tangential components. We also uh, use the we also describe its path uh, using the rectangular component so again what is a rectangular components so these are components uh, in this uh in the rectangular components we consider the three axis or the, at least the two the axis that we know in our previous years we have the x-axis uh, the y axis and the z axis. So, uh, what will happen with this one? So, uh, we just described the path or the motion of the particle moving along a curve line. So, let's say we have a particle here, and then the, the curve line here that uh, I show shown to you in the graph is the path of these of the motion of these particle. Now. We can describe its position, velocity, and acceleration using rectangular components. So, how are we going to do that? So, uh, see this specific particle. So, from the origin, going here, Let's say that uh, this is the x distance of the particle. Or at times, it is represented as a function of time. That the position <clears throat> of the particle along the x is a function of time. And also this one, from the origin, we can say that that is also the distance of the <clears throat> particle from the origin along the y-axis, so it, it can be represented also by y, or at times, a y is the function of time. The position of the particle along the y-axis is the function of time. Same thing also in the z-axis. It can also be represented by z. It's a position along the z-axis from the origin as z, or the position of the particle along the z-axis as a function of time. Now, from the origin towards uh, the particle, we have a position, we call that our r. No, that is the position r. So in the, in the first discussion on rectilinear motion, we use s. And then later on in the projectile, we already have the range. Let's say the x and the y the position is maximum height and the maximum distance or horizontal distance. Now we have the r. Since this is a rectangular component, uh, we can represent r as a vector quantity or as a scalar, scalar quantity. So its position or the position of the particle is represented by r. And that is for the vector quantity 
we have the x i hat plus y j hat plus k z hat sorry uh, it's a uh, z k hat rather plus a z k hat so uh, the x y and the z uh, this denotes these distances or these functions from the origin and on some meaning i hat j hat and the k hat so don't worry i hat j hat and k hat are just unit vector no so it denotes i hat denotes that that specific value the magnitude beside the i hat is a val the value that we or the magnitude from the x or along the x the j hat also corresponds to the value from uh, the y and the k hat also corresponds to the value from the z because like uh, for example we have the position of the particle along x is let's say we have three meters and then along the z is two meters and along y is five meters now for this example uh, the vector position of our particle is following the x i hat plus uh, y j hat plus z k hat and that is c i hat plus 5 j hat plus 2 k hat so kung derisyon lang nato siya nga 3 plus 5 plus 2 uh, we cannot add them directly because they are the position of the particle in each uh, div as from the origin to, uh, to a specific axis. So the i hat corresponds to the value of the, like say for this example, the position of the particle along the x, g hat is the, along the y, and k hat corresponds to the unit vector from along the z axis. Since uh, r, since we have an r vector, then we, can, we also have the magnitude of the r. Again, the magnitude of the r is just the square root of the square of the x plus the square of the y plus the square of the z. And then you will get the magnitude, the corresponding magnitude of the position, the r. Next, now what will happen if the vector, if the r vector is to be dif differentiated uh, with respect to time. Now, if we have dr over dt, then that is a position and differentiated or the uh, with, with for the first uh, time derivative, then we will have our velocity. So we will have a velocity vector. And katong nakabay nga x hat, j hat, k hat, di ba? That they will also be differentiated. Then we will have dx over dt, i hat, plus dy over d, dt, k hat, sorry, j hat, rather, plus dz over dt, k hat. Or simply, our velocity vector is just equal to the velocity along x, i hat, plus the velocity along y, j hat plus the velocity along z k hat that is the velocity vector and our magnitude of the velocity same thing also with the position we just uh, find the square root of the square of the velocity along x plus the velocity along y plus the velocity along square of the velocity along z so we have the vector quantity and also its scalar or just the magnitude now, what will happen if we differentiate the vector uh, velocity with respect to time? Then we will get an acceleration, vector acceleration, which is just equal to dvx over dt i hat plus dvy over dt j hat plus dvz over dt k hat, or simply the vector acceleration is equal to the acceleration along x i hat plus acceleration along y j hat 
plus acceleration along z k hat. And our magnitude of acceleration is just the uh, equal to the square root of the square of the acceleration along x plus the square of the acceleration along y plus the square of the acceleration along z. So, more than that, we're going to back the formula with this one with our rectangular components. Now, what will happen if uh, on a specific problem, uh, there is only the x and the y axis, there is no z axis. If there is no one z axis, then if you're asked to find the magnitude of the r, this is just equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And along, you don't need, you don't need to worry. And the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is equal to the square of the velocity along x plus the square of the velocity along y. And for the acceleration, that is just equal to the acceleration, square of the acceleration along x plus the square of the acceleration along y. So, na natin na mabala ka. So, mali na siya. So, last time, we have the normal tangential and components of a particle moving in a, in a curve motion or in a curvilinear motion. Now, we are discussing the rectangular components. So, the little case rectangular components, not that it's just the x, y, and z coordinates of our specific particle. So, uh, now, for mas mas na natin siya, let's proceed with our first example. So, we have an example here. Uh, our example 101 uh, states that at any instant, the horizontal position of the weather balloon is defined by x is equal to 80 feet. So, taking out of the unit uh, that is in imperial units, that is in foot or feet, where t is in seconds. If the equation of the path is y is equal to x squared over 10, so this is the equation of the path. So we have a we have here a parabolic path. And the equation is x squared, y is equal to x squared over 10. This is, this is also shown on the uh, picture here, the image here on the left side. Determine the magnitude of the velocity and the acceleration when t is equal to 2 seconds. Okay, so say given that you have a given uh, formula for the position that is equal to T, where t is in seconds and then the unit is in feet or foot. We also are given the formula of the or the equation of the path which is y is equal to x squared over 10. Now we're asked to find the magnitude of the velocity. So this is the scalar quantity, the magnitude of the velocity and also the acceleration at time is equal to Two seconds. So take note that the velocity is always tangent to the path of the particle and the acceleration is generally not tangent to the path of the motion. Now for this type of problem, uh, first thing for example that we can assume is that at time is equal to zero, x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, and y is equal to a zero. So next thing is what we are going to do since we are asked to find the velocity of the acceleration. Now to find the velocity, the, bar, the, the magnitude of the velocity is just equal to the square of the velocity along x plus the square of the velocity along y. So at the number one is this one, we'll, uh, we just derived it. Okay, this with respect to, differentiate it, this with respect to time. So we'll have dx over dt, or simply velocity along x is just equal to 8 foot per seconds. Take note of the uh, <clears throat> unit. Now how about for the y? How, how, how are we going to get uh, the vy in foot per seconds? Since we have an equation here that y is equal to x squared over 10, then we can just uh, substitute the value of x there. So y is equal to, since our x is equal to 80, then we'll have 80 squared over 10, or that is just equal to 64 t squared over 10 or simply 6.4 t squared uh, at 2 seconds so we are asked to find the velocity at 2 seconds so if we differentiate this uh the y with respect to time then we'll have our velocity along y which is equal to 12.8 t at t is equal to 2 seconds, our velocity along y is just equal to 25.6 foot per seconds. 
And then finally, we can get our value for our velocity, which is equal to square of the velocity ls plus square of the velocity along y is equal to 8 squared plus 25.6 squared. So the magnitude of the velocity is just equal to 26.821 foot per seconds. Next, sa pamigi pangita. We are to find also the magnitude of the acceleration at time is equal to 2 seconds. Okay, let's proceed. So, now that I uh, give you know, that our velocity along s is equal to 8 foot per seconds. Our velocity along y is equal to, we have the 12.8 t. Now, to get the acceleration along x, uh, we just differentiate the vx with respect to time that we'll have our acceleration along x. Is equal to 0, y0, zero, because 8 is a constant and the derivative of any constant is always equal to 0. And then this here uh, on this side, we, have, we need to differentiate vy, which is uh, respect to time, then we'll have 12.8 foot per second squared. This is the unit of our velocity, or uh, rather the acceleration along y. Since our acceleration at x is zero, then our acceleration, magnitude of the acceleration is equal to the, uh, our the magnitude of the acceleration along, uh, along y is equal to 12.8 foot per second squared. Since we only have an acceleration along y, and there is no acceleration along x, then the direction of our acceleration is at 90 degrees. Or that is moving, the balloon is moving upwards. 